Greetings, students, and welcome to this special edition of the Professor Travel Domestic Edition. I'm your host, the Professor Travel, coming to you from Orange County, California. This is the website, the vlog, and the podcast that you come to in order to learn more about different travel destinations. This is where you come as a community to discuss more. Hopefully, this will inspire you to travel more and ultimately to enjoy life more. Now, you can reach me on a variety of different social media platforms, including uh, my website, which is at theprofessortravel.com, on YouTube, on Facebook, and now on TikTok. TikTok, you can reach me at the professor travel. If you're an Instagrammer, you can find me there at the underscore professor underscore travel. If you're a Twitter, -er -er -er, then you can find me there at the professor tr1. And then if you're a blogger, you can find me there at the professor travel dot dot com. Today, I have a visiting professor to us here. Uh, Monique LeBlanc is coming to us from Brown University. How are you today? Doing wonderful. Thanks so much for having me. This is exciting. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule to come and visit us. I really appreciate it. So for my students that are out there who don't know a little bit about you, can you maybe go over a little bit about your backgrounds, maybe some of your educational credentials, and maybe some places that you've traveled in the past? Sure. Yeah. So, um, well, I grew up in Rhode Island. We moved up there um, when I was entering first grade. My dad was in the military and um, he was stationed in Boston, but also did some work with the Navy in um, Newport. And so we've, we had lived in Rhode Island ever since that time. Um, and then from there, I went to Bucknell University in central Pennsylvania. So I'm not sure if you've covered Pennsylvania yet on your domestic, <laughs> but that's not the easiest place to get to, but it is a great place. And um, I, I remember, you know, when you're introducing yourself to people um, at college and I would say, oh, I'm from Cumberland, Rhode Island. And people would say, is that close to Providence? And as we're all about to find out, um, yes, it is. Everywhere in Rhode Island is close to Providence. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, yeah, so from um, after Bucknell, I've, I've traveled around uh, the country quite a bit with for different jobs. I've lived on um, the East Coast. I've lived in Arizona on two separate occasions. Um, but right after college, I uh, traveled the the country with a friend of mine, we, we road trip for over a month and, and visited as many states as we could. Um, so I've actually been to all 48 continental states. Oh, wow. We need to get to Alaska and Hawaii. It's definitely on the list. Um, and, you know, I've traveled over to France mm -hmm. and I've done a lot of travel in the Caribbean. Um, my sister got married in Jamaica. Um, I got married in Mexico, nice. but, um, uh, in the other places, um, like I said, in the Caribbean, uh, Jamaica, and then St. John, uh, Aruba, uh, Dominican. So yeah, uh, we've definitely, uh, definitely like our warm weather vacations, that's for sure. <laughs> well, because I you know Rhode Island can get a little bit chilly. And that's the subject of today's topic is to talk about Rhode Island, which is great. Um, so let's dive into it really quick. Let's talk a little bit about the history of Rhode Island. I personally don't know almost anything about Rhode Island. So I'm hoping that you can enlighten me a little bit and my students a little bit about Rhode Island, whether it's about older history or more recent history. Talk to us a little yeah, bit about sure. that. So I think, you know, probably most kids in elementary school, when you're learning about like the history of the United States of America, you first learn about, um, you know, the, the first 13 colonies and uh, Rhode Island was one of those. So um, that's, that's exciting. Um, you know, it was kind of growing up, you're like, oh, we're learning about my state. Um, but yeah, it was actually founded by Roger Williams. And there's a university uh, in Rhode Island called Roger Williams University. Um, but I guess he was exiled from Massachusetts because he believed in religious freedom. Okay. And later was credited with kind of helping uh, draft the first amendment that, that talks about religious freedom. Um, and so that's kind of cool. Oh, wow. uh, but yeah, so, um, you know, that's kind of, I guess like the very early history. Um, we'll talk about tourism later, but in, in Newport, there uh, are the Newport mansions and, and specifically the Breakers is the biggest one and the most well-known mansion to visit. Um, and that was built um, uh, from the Vanderbilt family. So uh, I think it was Cornelius Vanderbilt. Um, he, their family uh, owned uh, the, the train stations in, in New York City. Yeah. Uh, so Newport was a vacation spot. And so um, those, mansions are 
unbelievable. Like when you visit them, you can't believe how long ago they were built and, you know, in the 1700s, 1800s and just the size of them. It's unbelievable. I mean, the Breakers Mansion has 70 rooms in it and it's, you know, a very Italian Renaissance style. It's, it's, it's really unbelievable. You know, that's the one thing I'm really kind of impressed with more than anything else. I grew up in Southern California and some of the oldest buildings that I grew up around were only maybe at the time, 50, 60 years old. And right. then I go to the East Coast because I actually lived in uh, Jersey City for a while. And okay. so when I went over there, all of a sudden I'm starting to see buildings that are like 200, maybe even 300 years old in some cases. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't even believe this. Then I go, of course, to visit Europe and that takes it to a whole new level. But, it, it, you know, when you start to see history like that, it's almost like an immersion process when you're seeing buildings that are very, very old and you're almost seeing like the stairs almost warped in some cases that are made of marble because people have been walking on them for hundreds of years. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. You're so right on that. Um, and I mentioned earlier that I had lived in Arizona on two separate occasions. And I remember noticing that, that there weren't really, really old buildings or old homes. And then, you know, moving back to New England, um, there's so many older homes and that's just, that's just part of it. And so um, I guess that's part of the character of, uh, of the homes out here, right? Yeah. Um, you call them old, you might say they have character, you know, could, could be either one, but um, yeah. And then like the, the earliest industries um, in Rhode Island, like, I feel like if you grew up in Rhode Island, you absolutely took a field trip to Slater Mill in Pawtucket. And that was, um, you know, a cotton mill, uh, one of the first mills. And then now when you drive around, you see so many older mill buildings, you know, those brick mill buildings with the big windows. Um, so yeah, that, that was some of the earlier uh, history, I guess, if you will, about, about Rhode Island. Not a problem. I'm surprised they're not turning some of those places into like, condominiums now and stuff like that you know I think they will I um you know was living in Massachusetts and most recently New Hampshire and all of New England is very close and you can get to <laughs> in a hot skip and a jump but um there are many uh you know small cities like Lowell Massachusetts and Haverhill Mass and even Lawrence Massachusetts where um you know those those cities are right on the water and they have turned those mill buildings into really cool loft apartments. So, yeah. Yeah. I started to see that in Jersey city. So it doesn't surprise me how that was the way that, that, that that's starting to develop. What are exactly, I mean, you, you, you mentioned that um, Rhode Island is a small state and almost a community to itself. It's like the cities are very close to each other, but like how close are the other states to it? That's the one thing I think we're kind of lost on. Yeah. Okay. So for example, um, I am still currently living in New Hampshire. We haven't moved yet. Um, but I will drive down to Brown where I work. Um, I guess I might not have mentioned that in my introduction. Um, <laughs> That's okay. I, I got you on that. That's fine. <laughs> no problem. Um, so when I commute down to work, I'm starting in New Hampshire. I'm crossing through Massachusetts and eventually landing in Rhode Island. And, um, you know, I would say it takes me about 75 minutes to go from New Hampshire to Rhode Island. That's, in, that's insanely <laughs> Including close. Across the state of Massachusetts in between. Uh, oh, so, wow. Okay. Yeah. So like, what are the states that border Rhode Island? So Rhode Island, it's actually kind of like tucked into Massachusetts a little bit. So on okay. the north, and the east of Rhode Island is Massachusetts. Okay. And then on the west of Rhode Island is Connecticut. And then um, the, the south and southeast of Rhode Island is the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, okay. So yeah, so it's Massachusetts and Connecticut as the two states. And then Rhode Island actually has, um, there's an island of Jamestown and that's like east of Rhode Island between like the mainland and Newport. Uh, so there's bridges that connect the mainland to Jamestown and then Jamestown to Newport. Um, but then south of Rhode Island, there is, I think the official name is New Shoreham, but we refer to it as Block Island. Okay. It's a fun destination spot. People like to catch a ferry and head over there. But um, I didn't know till recently that um, Block Island is really close to Montauk, which is like the... Oh, yeah. the eastern tip of uh long island yeah so here we are about 14 miles away from the state of new york uh when you're in when you're in block island rhode island so 
can't believe Pretty how cool. close I can't believe how close it was because I as I said I used to live in Jersey City right. and I would sometimes for my for my job at the time I would sometimes drive up to Connecticut I didn't realize how close I would be to Rhode Island and then like here in Southern California I drive an hour just to get to Los Angeles and go to LAX and it's it totally. just blows me away uh what is the geography tending to be like are there mountains in Rhode Island are there is mostly shoreline there's not <laughs> okay. uh, yeah so Rhode Island I think the highest point is like 800 feet, you know, um, <laughs> it's, there's no big mountains, but that being said, Scott, like being part of New England is really cool because you're, like I said before, you're just not far from anything. So if you want to head up to New Hampshire um, and go for hikes, like the White Mountains are right there. And Mount Washington is, is a huge peak. And, you know, it's the highest peak, uh, east of the Mississippi, I believe. Mm -hmm. And um, the White Mountains are all part of the Appalachian uh, Trail. So that's kind of cool too. But yeah, so if you are in Rhode Island and you think to yourself, geez, you know, I'd love to go get some pretty cool hiking in and, you know, hike a real peak and hike along the Presidential Mountain Range there uh, in the White Mountains, it's only probably a, a three hour drive from Rhode Island to get oh, there. Oh, so that's not bad at all. I right. like that actually. Um, For you, so like, you know, you're, you're still in California. You've barely left LA. <laughs> that's me That's me to San Diego, it's three hours. I mean, come on, that's not a bad deal. Um, or actually eh, maybe a little bit more, not, no, not even to Vegas. That's actually, it's, it's about three and a half, four hours for me to get to Vegas. So, I mean, that's, there you go. Um, what about in terms of the weather? I mean, for the most part, it seems like you know, you got the seasons there. Um, they're pretty pronounced. You get really beautiful summers. And then the winters, of course, are a little bit chilly. Anything right. crazy? Uh, like, uh, uh, like, are there any extreme weather conditions out there, like hurricanes or stuff that happens? Yeah, so there are. Um, as you said, we have four seasons. That, that's a huge draw to New England. People love to get out here and see the foliage. And um, so we are uh, your very traditional four seasons. But the extreme weather patterns that we would see are every once in a while, like, um, you know, a really big hurricane um, or when it's winter time, you know, we get a lot of snow, but sometimes it could turn into a blizzard uh, into that category. So um, the most historical one that people would talk about in Rhode Island is the blizzard of 78 uh, okay. that affected a lot of New England states and in Rhode Island, um, you know, there were 20, 20 deaths associated with it. Oh, wow. Um, and then some, some hurricanes that have come through um, in the, in the fifties, there was hurricane Carol uh, that definitely uh, caused some deaths and some damage. And then hurricane Irene um, mm. in the early two thousands. But a lot of times we'll get uh, like the downgraded versions. The of remnants of it. Yeah. That, that come up the coast there, but Yep, we definitely, um, you know, sometimes get quite a bit of snow or, uh, like I said, the remnants of, of those those um, tropical storms. Well, it's nice to know that there's they're few and far between. They're not that that they're not that common. But of course, with you know the weather being what it is, especially global climate change in the future, you know, those might be a little bit of a challenge. Um, yeah. So now let's let's talk a little bit about culture and and talk about what's going on in the state of Rhode Island. Um, in terms of religion, are there any pronounced religions that are predominant within the area that you're aware of? Yeah, so this one um, was really interesting uh, for Rhode Island. Um, about half of the religious population in Rhode Island is Catholic, okay. and there's only one other state in the country that they can say you know a whole half of their religious population is, is one, uh, one religion. And that's Utah. Utah. Yeah. So, right. Right. As, as I was saying, <laughs> you were, you knew. And so, um, that was really interesting to find out, you know, I, I would have assumed that Catholic was a predominant, uh, religion, uh, in Rhode Island, but, um, I didn't know that fact about it. So that was okay. interesting. Interesting. Now in terms of art, uh, w whether it's singing, dancing, um, you know, uh, or, or acting, I, there's not a lot of, pro there's not a lot of prominent figures that, that pop to mind, but there are local events though, that come from time to time, correct? Yeah, there are. And um, so there's this uh, tradition that happens over the summer um, in the nicer weather. Uh, I would say it's been going on for 20, 25 years. Um, maybe, maybe earlier than that. Maybe I was just too young to know that it was happening, but um, 
you know, I remember in summers uh, when I'd come home from, you know, being in college, my friends and I would head down to Providence. There's, you know, waterways that go through the city, of course, and um, there's this event called the, the water fires. And so in the middle of the uh, waterways, there's essentially these fire pits and they, they have fire on them and there's music playing, uh, you know, all along the, the path and you can take gondola rides. So it's really cool event. It draws a lot of people. A lot of people are just there to watch and not take a gondola ride or just walk around and, um, you know, get some, get some food and, 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 you know, walk around and enjoy the music. So that's a really cool event. Um, and then something else I thought of uh, actually is um, there's uh, some um, writers, uh, the Cohen brothers, I believe. I think they're known for some different yeah. comedies. Uh, I think they're they're from Rhode Island, and like one of the movies that uh, stood out to us uh, growing up was Dumb and Dumber. And oh I yeah, think, you know, <laughs> but probably some of your students listening might not know, but. Um, that movie is filmed in Rhode Island. So you see them oh. build the iconic big blue bug that's um, on top of a building in, uh, in Warwick, I think on, on I-95, our major interstate. And, um, you know, they actually drive by some different places in our town of Cumberland where we grew up. And so we, we love pointing that out whenever we watch the movie. <laughs> That's kind of fun. I like that. Um, now, in terms of the languages of the area, it's primarily um, all English. There's not really any deviation on any languages at all. Yeah, you know, there's there's a little bit of a, a yeah, I think it's predominantly English for sure. Um, I think that, um, you know, there there is a history of immigration, of course, um, to Rhode Island. So I think there's you know, we have some Italian speaking, French speaking, Spanish speaking, Portuguese. Um, so just, you know, sprinkled in there, but the predominant language is English. Okay. And then we get to my favorite topic, which is food, because I'm a foodie. Yeah. That's how I go. Um, it, seafood appears to be the big thing. I, I, I noticed on my screen here, we got calamari, we got some clams, we got oysters and things like that. Like, it, it, what, what are the things that spring to mind for you when you think of food and Rhode Island? Seafood, first and foremost. So, you know, you have a lot of pictures there. Um, absolutely. There's a, there's a place called Iggy's and it's, it's really well known for their seafood. You know, if you want fried clams, you're definitely going there. Um, what I see here on, on the screen, um, stuffies, stuffed quahog. That's, that's what it's called. Stuffies. Yep. Yep. And so it's, it's basically like, if you like stuffing, you're going to like these. It's stuffing with some seafood in it, um, for sure. And then I see calamari and, and that's, um, you know, I guess our official state appetizer. I didn't know that that even existed, but um, yeah, we, we certainly really like our seafood here. Um, but another uh, couple of things to note about Rhode Island, if you visit Rhode Island in the summertime and you're visiting the beaches, you're definitely going to come across a Dell's lemonade stand, um, or you should certainly try to come across a Dell's lemonade stand. Um, and it's like got, you know, one of those big umbrellas over it that's like got the green and yellow stripes. Um, so you'll notice it, but um, they make a delicious frozen lemonade drink. And in the summer, it's just like, it hits the spot. Perfect. <laughs> so that's um, really famous in Rhode Island. And then, um, you know, a lot of times you can go to a store or go to a restaurant and you can order a chocolate milk. Um, well, here in Rhode Island, you can order coffee milk. Mm. And um, I didn't realize it was a Rhode Island thing until I went away to college and I, I tried to get one. Um, and people were like, you want milk in your coffee? Uh, and I was like, no, coffee milk. So uh, <laughs> the, the brand, um, you know, most famous is Autocrat, but it's like, you know, if you're going to make chocolate milk at home, you've got the chocolate syrup, you pour it in your milk, stir it. Same with coffee milk. It's not the same, um, like thickness density as, as chocolate syrup. It's a little bit, um, more liquid, but yeah, you pour it in and I guess if you drink coffee, it, it kind of tastes like an iced coffee that's made really sweet. So, you know, several sugars and creams in it, I guess, if you will. But um, so, yeah, coffee milk is, is a big thing. And then um, the last thing, it, it, every state has their different name for things that exist other places. But here in Rhode Island, um, you know, we don't we don't order uh, a milkshake. We order a, a frap. A frap. Uh, yep, a frap. So. Um, a coffee frap would be just the thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. 
Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Now, sports. You might know something about sports, being that you work in sports a little bit over at Brown. Um, yeah. Any of these teams that are on the screen uh, resonate with you at all? Have you heard about any of them before? Yes, absolutely. Um, so I have to say, I, I haven't heard of the Rhode Island Reds until um, I looked at your presentation here, but the Providence Bruins are, are definitely a big deal. It's the minor league team of the Boston Bruins, which is the professional hockey team of New England, right? So, um, you know, we, we love having the Providence Bruins um, here in our capital. And then uh, the Paw Sox, uh, actually, Scott, a fun fact. So that's the minor league team for the Boston Red Sox, which again is our professional baseball team up here in New England. Um, but the Paw Sox have actually changed cities not too far from Providence or Pawtucket where they were, but um, although it's not far, it's in a whole nother state, they're now going to be operating out of Worcester, Massachusetts. Oh. Um, so as opposed to, they were in Pawtucket, Rhode Island, hence the pop box. And um, so now they're going to be in Worcester, Massachusetts. And so I guess their nickname is going to be the Woo Sox. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's sad that you guys, yeah, it's like you guys get to lose them, but I mean, hey, you yeah. know, you have the memories though. Right. Absolutely. You know, so fun growing up to be able to go to, you know, uh, a baseball game and, you know, you, you feel like you're, you're part of the part of the game, you know, at a smaller stadium and things like that. So uh, definitely a lot of nostalgia there. Special, special throw out here. Uh, just, just on a random note, my grandfather was actually on the Boston Braves wow. way back in the day. So yep. little his, yep, little little history here. So uh, before my dad, my, my grandfather used to be on the Boston Braves. He was, I think, a relief pitcher for them uh, way back in the day in the 1930s or something like that. Wow. So yeah, uh, apparently he was in the cool. What a cool like history. That. I know, right? <laughs> and then in terms of, in terms of uh, holidays, I understand that there might be a state holiday. Is that correct? Yeah, there's like a random Rhode Island holiday. Um, I, I say it's random because it's Victory Day. And uh, which victory are we celebrating on, on that day? It is... Um, celebrating when Japan surrendered in 1945 at the end of World War II. So like, it doesn't seem like that's only something Rhode Island would be yeah, it's interested like, why in. Why Rhode Island? <laughs> yeah, so I, I swear, Scott, every, every year uh, on Victory Day, my sisters and I, you know, have a, a quick discussion where we're like, here we are, Rhode Island, we're the one state celebrating this <laughs> Victory Day. <laughs> what, when does it take place typically? What month does it fall in? That's in August, I believe. Okay. Well, you know, I kind of look at it as maybe it was a created holiday that was like, okay, we're, we, we have nothing really in August. Let's throw a holiday in here and it gives us an opportunity to kind of play around with it. So maybe, yep. <laughs> maybe that's the thing. I don't know. Um, so let's jump into population. So with all the red that I'm seeing here, it looks like that's probably Providence. Is that what I'm understanding? Yep. You're, you're absolutely right. That is. Okay. And then are there any other major, like it was, as we get up n a little bit further north here, do you know what that is? So that is Woonsocket. Um, and Woonsocket is, so the, the major red part where you're talking about where Providence is, and then it kind of goes into Pawtucket and then it goes up to Woonsocket. And Woonsocket is another um, town in Rhode Island that's like really industrial, um, a lot of old mills. Uh, so I'm not surprised to see that it's it's red there. It's definitely well populated. Excellent. Okay, cool. And not a, it doesn't really appear as though there's a lot of rural farms or anything like that. I mean, I know at one point you were making you mentioned that there was like cotton and uh, I mean, obviously there's a lumber industry in, in the area, but it doesn't right. really appear as though there's any like major farms or, or, or dairies or things like that that are really prominent. Yeah, so like out like Western Rhode Island there, you see like the the darker shades of yellow and, and green. Mm -hmm. um, and it's funny because growing up, whenever there was any sort of snow, you know, you're watching the ticker on the TV to see if your school is delayed or canceled. <laughs> and it's, it's crazy to say this because Rhode Island is such a small state, but like there was this town called Foster Gloucester, so it's like a, a regional school, 
Um, so Gloucester Road, like nobody knew where that was. Like, it's like, where is this place? You know, but without a doubt, um, anytime there was any sort of weather, Foster Gloucester was canceled. And then like us over in Cumberland, you know, we'd still have school normal time. Uh, so it was always kind of like, where is that? So yeah, that's a little further out West and that's in that area that I was just talking about. Um, so um, definitely more more in the sticks, if you will. <laughs> okay, and then there's this island that we were talking right off the coast here that's closer to the New York area. Yeah, that's Block Island. And then yeah, like the uh, little dark spot that you see on the bottom, that's that's Montauk, I would, I would guess. Okay. Uh, yeah. Very cool. All right, so let's talk about the employers within the state. Now, of course, CVS I've heard of, uh, Citizens Bank I've heard of, uh, Textron I've heard of a little bit, uh, yeah. Rhode Island Hospital. Of course, there's this little college that uh, is out there called Brown. I'm, I'm understanding that you might There we that. are. Yep, exactly. <laughs> uh, Unify, um, uh, GTech, and uh, FM Global. Any other things pop out to you as far as major employers that are in the area that you're I think you I think you nailed it. Um, you know, I actually have connections to both CVS and Textron. So my brother-in-law is um, a tax accountant at Textron, but, you know, that they're really a, a conglomerate that has, you know, they have work with aviation and, you know, um, building engines and, you know, helicopters and things like that. So it's really a huge uh, industry around. They've got a big building in Providence. Um, and then CVS, my sister works at CVS Corporate. Um, I, I won't even try to uh, say what her title is. Um, I know she's just somebody who's high up and in charge. And also, um, she's been a great resource uh, during the times of COVID with, um, you know, obviously working in a, in a health company. Um, you know, they're, they're working a lot on, um, you know, treatments and, and being able to, um, well, just general, you know, generally getting ready for distribution of vaccines. I know that they're going to be probably at the course. forefront of that. Yes, yes. So uh, CVS is one of the, the top 10 retailers in the United States. So um, I know it's the only one that is headquartered in New England, which is pretty neat. So right. yeah, CVS is a big, a big claim to fame in Rhode Island. And then, of course, Brown University. Uh, you know, I'm a little biased since I work there. But, uh, <laughs> You know, really in a in a neat spot in Providence called College Hill, uh, and it's it is literally on a hill. Uh, Providence is is down the hill, um, so yeah, it's great. Very cool. Now, talk to me a little bit about the transportation corridor that you have in Rhode Island. You said the 15 is the major uh, highway. Is that correct? 95. Oh, 95. I'm sorry. 95. Um, yeah, that's a big one. You know, that'll take you all the way. You know, from Florida and all the way up to Maine. Um, so that's our, that's our big interstate. And then uh, we have TF Green Airport. It's a great airport. Um, you know, it's definitely like, we also have Boston Logan, but TF Green has equally, uh, you know, it, there's no need to fly into Boston. You know, you still have the same access in and out of TF Green, which is great. They, they fly to a lot of major cities. Um, and then ports, we've got Newport. Um, as I mentioned before, and then there's also, I think it's Quonset, Quonset Point. Um, it might even be be known by another name, Davisville or something. But um, Quonset Point, I, I used to have some AAU basketball practices at one of the the gym barracks there. So um, those are the major point ports, rather. And then we do have an Amtrak station too um, in Providence. So. So that's helpful. And then um, other than that, there's not like in some of like the bigger cities, they've got like a, a you know, the train, a T system uh, for local transportation, get, getting in and out of the city. And we don't have that, but we have uh, ripped out a bus system, Rhode Island public transportation. Oh, cool. Good to know. And then finally, um, in, in terms of this, uh, what about major tourism attractions? What, what is the big draw for Rhode Island if, if a person wants to visit? Yeah, I think, you know, definitely um, Newport is a, is a huge draw. Um, the beaches, you know, we've got 10 state beaches. Um, Newport has all the mansions. So as I talked about the breakers being uh, the most famous one probably, but there's, um, there's this uh, paved walk called the cliff walk. And it basically goes behind all of the Newport mansions. So you can follow it and visit, you know, just visually um, see the backs, you know, of the mansions and, and their backyards. 
Um, and also that's, you know, on the one side is, is the ocean and on the other side are the mansions. And that's a five mile walk. So that's a really kind of popular thing to do when you visit Newport. Um, and it's really cool. Like you would think, okay, there's these mansions and, you know, you can obviously go take a tour of them and buy tickets. Um, so you would think like you probably don't have access to it at all, but yeah. you're walking the cliff walk and you literally could just say like, oh, hold on, I'm going to like walk up into the backyard of this mansion real quick. Like it's right there. There's not these big fences between you and it. So it, it's really neat. Um, it's a really cool thing to do. But yeah, I think people come to, to Rhode Island to, to visit the beaches for sure. Absolutely. That sounds like it would be a lot of fun. Now, in terms of the government of the area, I think for the most part, based on my research, at least, it seems like the, I, I, it def, it's definitely a blue state. Um, there's a it, very, very solid blue. Uh, the state representation appears to be blue. The local representation appears to be democratic as well. Not a lot yeah. of uh, conservative in the state. And then we move on to natural resources. It, uh, based on, again, my research, it looks like the big draws there were the fishing industry, very big in the area there, lumber, corn, anything else that was just pops out to you that maybe I didn't bring up there? No, I think you nailed it with this list. Um, you know, the fishing industry is definitely huge. Again, like, you know, being on the coast and being right on the water. Um, I had friends growing up whose, whose parents worked in the fishing industry. So that's a big one for us. What, what did you refer to them as? What, a, a person that does lo uh, lobster? Uh, I said, yeah, my, uh, one of my AAU teammates, her dad was a lobsterman. Lobsterman, uh, okay. So, yeah, yeah. So it was actually great because uh, we would host a tournament once a summer and we you know, have teams come up from different states. And uh, when, when we did that, uh, her dad, you know, they, they made a ton of fresh lobster rolls. And in a lot of places in New England, uh, and most people call it lobster roll because you lobster. have to have that, you gotta have the <laughs> accent on there. Um, but, you know, everybody, it makes, you know, if you're in New England on one of the coastal states, so Rhode Island, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Maine, you're gonna find yourself uh, a great lobster roll for sure. You know what? Again, little fun fact, and this goes back to the 1800s. Um, for my students that are out there that were curious about lobster, uh, I don't know why, but here you go. Um, so, so lobster was actually not considered a delicacy. It was considered a food that they would give to people that were criminals. So you would you would you would take these lobsters would go to. Uh, prisons and stuff like that because they're kind of like oh well these are just scavengers of the ocean so so right. if you were in prison in the 1800s living in the new england area you would get lobster along with your food on a fairly regular basis it's like now everybody wants it because it's so fantastic so it's yeah. just, it's it's so interesting to see the evolution of a lobster there so right I, there you go <laughs> you're full of fun facts oh i try you know being a professor you know you try to do these things um now in terms of education now there's a there are a plethora of colleges in your area obviously university of rhode island uh rhode island uh college uh there's this little one brown we talked about again um <laughs> providence college uh roger williams another big one um ccri uh i think is another pretty sizable one uh, anything I'm like leaving off there or like, what are some other things that you had in mind? No, yeah, you know, um, my, both of my sisters attended Providence College. Uh, one of my sisters went as an undergrad, the other one um, did her, her MBA there. So um, that's, a, that's a big private school uh, in Providence as well. Um, but no, you, you nailed it with this list and uh, something that's cool um, that kind of is a, a newer development in the state of Rhode Island, I believe within the last 10 years, I think, uh, is that Rhode Island residents can attend uh, community college for free. So nice. I think that's um, really uh, just a, a great thing that we do in Rhode Island to you know, improve the, the rate of college students and you know, education accessibility for our residents. And quality of life. Uh, do you happen to know like, uh, what the literacy rate or what, it, what it, uh, like, I, I don't think you guys probably have any issues with your education system in the state of Rhode Island at all, do you? Not that I'm aware of, Scott, and I'm not uh, quite sure on our liter literacy rate. I guess maybe that's a positive thing that it hasn't stood out as an area of concern. Well, that's, and that's fantastic. <laughs> um, one thing, though, that is a little bit of an area of concern, and it, it speaks to, I think, a lot of what's going on in today's uh, modern uh, 
politics and what's going on within the country, especially with uh, the death of George Floyd. Um, we talk about uh, all the things that are being impactful because of that. Uh, the state itself, the state of Rhode Island is a state, but it's also known as um, the Providence Plantations as well. Is that correct? Yeah, the official name is the state of Rhode Island and Providence Plantations. Okay. Um, so obviously uh, that is, you know, the, the connotation of uh, plantations and that, that obviously uh, draws out thoughts of, of slavery in the past and which Rhode Island, you know, does have a history of slavery. It, it was the first state of the um, 13 original colonies to um, stop supporting slavery, but it does have that history. And it's something that um, is on the ballot uh, on this election, I believe. Um, my dad uh, still lives in Rhode Island and is to uh, abolish that part of the state name and have it just be the state of Rhode Island and not bring references um, to, to that time. Excellent. And I'm, I'm, and I, and I know there's going to be people in there that are like, well, I don't want to necessarily strike that from history, but there's a place for history. And it's usually in the, in the textbooks and stuff like that, which is, it's good to know about and have that information available. But again, you know, my own personal view, and this is where I'm creeping in here with my own perspective. <laughs> I, I think, I think if we can leave a lot of those things in the past, it's probably a, a better thing for us to be able to move forward with. So yeah, just, absolutely. I think it's important to understand uh, your past and, and own your past too. And certainly, um, but I think that, um, you know, it, it's important to make sure, like, it, it to me is, is um, you know, this is a, a, a way to be more inclusive and um, not try to bring uh, an older uh, term that carries with it a lot of weight and hurt into present day when you talk about this is our state name. So, yeah. yeah. Going into personal views, Scott, I'm, I'm with you. I think that's uh, that would be a, a positive move for our state. I think so too. And then in terms of safety and security, um, I don't ever hear about foreign or domestic terrorism threats or any type of major crime issues that are going on in the state of Rhode Island. That is just not on the radar. I don't think anything yeah. that you've heard of. No, no, no terror threats um, in Rhode Island. And um, by and large, I think a really safe state. Wonderful. So before we conclude, let's do just a quick little one minute elevator speech. So I have someone, maybe I'm a student that wants to potentially, maybe I'm going to go to Rhode Island. Maybe that's on the radar for me. Talk to me really quick. Why would I want to visit Rhode Island? Just sell me on it like really fast. What, what do you think I'd want to go for? Yeah, I mean, you want to visit Rhode Island. Um, as we talked about, you, you definitely want to go to Newport. You want to visit all the beaches in Rhode Island. Narragansett is another popular area for beaches too. Um, and, and then like the other huge draw about Rhode Island is, so we talked a lot about the seafood and, and kind of the summer feels and you're going to do that. But Providence is a really cool city. Um, I like to tell people that you know, there's some cities that like, if you've never been to them and you get dropped into that city, you feel a little overwhelmed, a little intimidated. Like, how do I get around? I'm not familiar with the subway or the T system. Um, what am I doing? And Providence is not that type of city. So you're still going to get all of the, the perks and benefits of being in a city, um, different cultures, really great different cuisines. Federal Hill is known as a really like foodie area you would want to visit if you were in Providence. So you're going to get all of everything that you want from a city without being overwhelmed. You're going to be able to navigate really easily. So, so that's cool too. And then the last part is when you visit Rhode Island, you get to visit New England. And, and so you're, you're in Rhode Island, you get to visit all of the other states that I talked about, you know, Massachusetts, um, you know, Boston is an hour from Providence, right? And so you can go see so much more too. So it's, it's a trip that allows you to expand. And I think that's really, really fun. Awesome. Well, again, Monique, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge with us. It's been really fun. I've learned a lot today. So thank you so much and very kindly for you. Yes, absolutely. This was so much fun, Scott. Thanks for having me on as a host. And um, I hope your your students, uh, if even one says Rhode Island on my list, then this was a victory. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, it's definitely, I'm definitely on the list. So thank you so much for that. Well, cool.
Uh, now, for my students that are out there, if you have any questions or comments in the future, you can certainly send them to me at scott at theprofessortravel.com. If you're on YouTube right now, please feel free to click that bell icon right above us to be notified about when new videos are posted. If you haven't already done so, please hit the subscribe button. It does us a world of good for the channel, and it certainly helps with the algorithm. So thank you so much for that. And if you like this kind of content and you want to see more of it, give us a like, give us a thumbs up on that. And then finally, if you're hearing us on the podcast, certainly feel free to rate and review us. But until next time, my name is Scott. I am the Professor of Travel and make every day a travel adventure. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye now.